Hi, this is Danny Joe Lewis, and as well as being a music producer and DJ, I'm a course creator and tutor at Point Blank Online Music School over in Hoxton in London. Now, what I like to do every now and again to challenge myself is to take a sound from a famous tune and try and recreate it. So we're going to do that in this video. The track is Noir and Haze Around, and it's a Solomon remix. So I'm going to recreate the sound using Ableton Live, going to use a custom instrument rack with two layers of two separate synthesizers to create the sound. So firstly, I'll take you on a tour of what it sounds like in context, and then afterwards, I'll show you how we actually build the sound itself. So I'm just going to solo the original audio that I've got looping. I'm going to bring in my bass. And then the kick drum. So we've got two chains. I've got one instance of analog. And then I've also got an instance of operator. You can see what's going on here. EQ, spectrum analysis. That's so that I can explain some concepts to you guys a little bit later. And then over here, EQ and spectrum as well. The key advantage of working with this kind of concept is the fact that you can EQ each layer separately and affect it, of course. My sub layer is operator, which is gonna be mono. I could add some width to the analog layer, which is the octave above, if I wanted to. You know, That's the whole flexibility of this concept. So you can see I've got the keyboard ready here. I'm gonna be assigning some controls to make it a lot more hands-on. And the first step in creating the sound is to come up to the Create menu, go to Insert MIDI Track, and we're gonna to come to the Instrument Rack. And what we do is we double-click here. You can see down here we've got a section ready to drop some instruments. And I'm gonna take the analog and bring this down. I'm gonna click on this icon here to see the chains. And then I'm gonna take Operator and bring this down too, so they're both available. I'm going to set this up, I'm going to come into the analog, I'm going to click the filter on, and I'm going to set the filter envelope settings here onto the first four MIDI controls here. So to do this, right click, go to edit MIDI map, just going to move the first slider, that's the attack set, I'm going to come to decay, sustain, and then release. The other thing that I'm going to do is this slider, I'm going to set to the envelope amount. This is all going to be clear a little bit later on. And the final four faders over here, I'm going to set these up with the amplifier envelope. So the attack, decay, sustain, and release. So that's the envelope set up. The other thing that I want to do is to click on the filter frequency adjust this rotary control here, and then resonance over here. And we've got everything set up for us to be able to work with this virtual instrument, much like a real synthesizer. I'm gonna start off with the analog layer, which is gonna be used to create a plucky kind of texture. So this is what it sounds like at the moment. I've got the filter mapped. So this is a low pass filter. And you can see in the spectrum, if I rotate it to the right, it's bright. And if I rotate it to the left, it's warmer. So we want to go from high to low very quickly. So it's really hard for me to do that manually. What we do is we'll assign the filter envelope to do the job. So let me show you. I'm going to bring the cutoff frequency down. And what we're going to do is adjust the amount that the frequency is affected by the envelope. When I bring this slider up, you can see the envelope amount go up too. Let's see how it sounds. If I increase the amount on this decay slider, it's gonna take a longer time for the filter to go from the high frequency to the low frequency. And that brings in that plucky texture. But what I wanna do is just exaggerate that by increasing the modulation amount. And I'm gonna bring the cutoff frequency down too. So it's really starting to resemble the Solomon bass. Now I want to exaggerate this by increasing the resonance, which is going to add level at the actual cutoff frequency. It's just a little bit too much though. I'm going to reduce it a little bit. All I want is just a little bit of extra bite to the sound. I'm 
I've come back to my original instrument here and this was created by constantly referring to the Solomon remix. It wasn't practical to do that in the demonstration that I did before. So I'm just going to show you the key differences. This is a lot more muted. The envelope amount is less. Have a listen. Now I had something that was more like this. So I'm going to take it back to the 2.74. A couple of other things, the frequency on the cutoff is slightly different, it's a little bit higher. Resonance is very similar. So that's what's working there. I'm going to explain now the sub layer. So I'm going to turn this on. This is a sine wave, it's a default setting for the operator. But what I've done is I've used an EQ to roll off the mids and highs. We recommend that the sub layers are in mono, it's dead center. And that means that in a club you're going to get a solid bottom end. The analog layer is designed to sit above. So what I've done is I've EQ'd this, I've rolled off the lows. This is where that sine wave is sitting. So this sound now is occupying the mids and the highs and I've boosted it just a little bit on the mids too. The great thing about this is when we play the two together, they create a composite bass sound. And a very modern thing these days is for people to add width to bass. And we can do that safely by not adding the width to the sub layer, but in fact, by doing it to the analog layer here. So I'm gonna drop in a chorus so you can hear what that sounds like. So without the width, and now with the width. So some people would prefer that. It's a very contemporary approach. So just as a reminder, let's have a listen again with the new bass in context with the original one. This time on a section where there's a vocal. So if you enjoyed that example of programming a bass sound, you might want to check out some of our courses. We've got the Ableton Live beginner course, which is designed to take you over eight weeks to a really good level from having no experience of Ableton Live. And then we've got our second level course, which is more focused on sound design and audio processing for the more experienced user. For full information about these courses, visit pointblankonline.net and you can check out some free tutorials on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pointblankonline.